Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be looking at a confidence interval in more depth, meaning we've just created one. Now, what does that tell us or show us or what are the mechanics of it? So in the last video, we came up with a confidence interval that ranged from 0 0.3073 up to 0 0.3327. So that's the interval itself. When you draw that, if you were to try to visualize it, that means that you have this value on a number line, and that's what we would call the lower bound, and then the 0.3327 is your upper bound. Now, because the confidence interval is p hat plus or minus your z star times your standard error, I know that p hat is going to be in the exact center. And remember, this is also referred to as our sample estimate or your point estimate. So when we were looking at a confidence interval generically, we called it a point estimate. So that's what it is here. And for this problem, our p hat was 0.32. So it's in the exact center of these values. That's where p hat is located. Now, when you add and subtract, so this value here, you're adding and subtracting what's called the margin of error. So when you add your margin of error to p hat, it gets you to your upper bound. And when you subtract your margin of error from p hat, it gets you your lower bound. Now, in the video that we did, we knew that margin of error was 0 0.0127. But I wanna show you how you can find that if you wanted to, working backwards, and also just more of the mechanics of a confidence interval. So just like anything, the width between two values, if you want to find that, you would take your upper bound and subtract your lower bound. So. For this problem, if I was to take 0.3327 and I was to subtract 0.3073, I would come up with a width of 0 0.0254. So this is the width of this confidence interval, okay? Next, if I wanted to find that margin of error estimate, well, how many margins of error are there in a confidence interval? One, two, because you add and subtract. And so if I were to take the width, which is the whole distance, and just divide by two, I would find my margin of error. So 0 0.0254 divided by two, and I get 0 0.0127, which we verified up here because that's what we calculated when we were working forward. So there are opportunities for you to be able to work backwards, or if you were just given a confidence interval, you'd be able to figure out yourself what the point estimate was, what the margin of error is, what the width is, um, and you could do a lot with that. The last thing that I wanna point out to you, and this is an important thing uh, to check yourself and also why checking the conditions or reviewing the conditions are important, but when you calculate these confidence intervals, your lower bound, your upper bound, p hat, the standard error, and the margin of error will all always be between zero and one when you're doing a confidence interval for p. If you find that these values are outside of that range, you've done something wrong or your uh, conditions were not met. The only value in these problems that will be outside of the zero to one range is your Z star multiplier. So that's a deeper look at the mechanics of a confidence interval. Uh, stay tuned for future videos where we do some more examples. See you there.